Today, we'll be doing a practice quiz for calculus or social science. Here we have the limit as x tends to 4 for the number 4. The limit of the number is a number. So the answer is just 4, which is D. So it means if I have the number 5 here, it doesn't matter what I have extending to. The limit of a number is a number, so the answer would have been 5. But in this case, we have the limit of 4. So the number 4, the limit of 4 is just the number, which is 4. We have the limit as x tends to 1, x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, if I substitute 1 in the numerator and the denominator, 1 squared is 1, so 1 minus 1, that's 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So in this case, we have to factorize in order to find the limit. So we factorize the above x squared minus 1, difference of 2 squared is x minus 1 times x plus 1 over x minus 1. Of course, we need to write our limit symbol, limit as x tends to 1. The whole point of factorizing is so that we can cancel. Here we can cancel x minus 1. So we have the limit as x tends to 1, x plus 1, and replace x to be 1. So I'm going to have 1 plus 1 to give me 2. The limit as x tends to infinity for 6x minus 3 over x. So in this case, we have to divide each of these by x. So the limit as x tends to infinity, I'm going to have 6x over x minus 3 over x and then x over x. Now this x cancels, so uh, we have in 6. The limit as x tends to infinity for minus 3 over x, that's going to be 0. And then we have x over x, x into itself goes one time. So canceling this, x into itself goes one time. So I'll have 1. So I'll have over 1. So therefore, I'll have the answer to be 6 because 6 minus 0 is 6 divided by 1 is 6. For the next question, we're going to find the limit as x tends to 0 for the function x plus 2 over 2 to the x. So we are going to replace x to be 0. So what I have here, I'm going to have 0 plus 2. And in the denominator, 2 to the power 0. Now 0 plus 2, that's 2. And 2 to the 0 is 1. Anything raised to the power 0 is 1. So my answer is 2, so it is C. Now we have considered a function f such that r maps to r given by which of the following is false at the point x equal negative 2. So this is saying f of negative 2 is 7. Remember it's equal to. So we're going to replace x to be minus 2 in order to replace x to be minus 2 we will get the number 7. So this is true, and it asks which is false. The limit as x tends to 2 coming from the left, this is the left, is equal to the right. So this one represents a function coming from the left. If you want to know that good way to find out, you have the number negative 2. x less than negative 2 will be on the left. So that means we'll have 2x squared minus 1 for x greater than or equal to negative 2. I will have 9 plus x. So therefore, since I have 9 plus x is on the right, so this is coming from the right, and then this is coming from the left. So for the right, we would use the function 2x squared 
minus one, but remember it's negative two. So I replace x to be negative two. So I have negative two squared is four times two is eight. So eight take away one, that gives me seven. Well, for the next side, I will have nine plus x. So it'll be nine minus two because when you replace x with minus two, so that is seven. So this one is true. And since the left and the right are the same, then it means that this is also true. The limit as x tends to minus two is seven. The next statement states, the function is discontinuous at x equal negative two. This is false. Remember f of minus two, it is seven. The limit exists and it's also seven. So it is actually continuous. So the answer is D. Consider the function f such that r maps to r given by four minus x squared. If x is less than zero, and then we have three x minus two. If x is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to one, and x greater than one, we have one. What is the limit as x tends to zero? We have to talk about coming from the left and coming from the right. So what's the limit as x tends to zero coming from the right? And in order to know which one is coming from the right, we can look at it this way. We have zero and we have one. This x less than zero will be on the left here. Well, this one will be x is greater than or equal to zero, but lesser than or equal to one. So this function is four minus x squared. That's on the left. And on the right of zero, we have three x minus two. So coming from the right, it's literally the function that's on the right of zero, which is the three x minus two. So replace the x with zero. So I have three times zero minus two. So this is three times zero, that's zero. So I'll have minus two. Then working out the limit as x tends to zero, coming from the left, we are going to use a function four minus x squared. And I will replace x to be zero. So I'll have four minus zero. So that gives me four. So because the left and the right are not the same, then we are able to say the limit does not exist. So that will be the answer for this. Which of the following is true? The limit as x tends to one does not exist. So it means the left is not the same as the right. So once again, we are going to look at, so, the inequality that I'm interested in is x greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to one, we have three x minus two. And for x greater than one, we will have the number one. So we have to find out what is the left and the right. The right, I'll have one, meaning the limit as x tends to one coming from the right for the f of x, there is nothing to work out, so the answer would be one here. While for this one, the limit as x tends to one coming from the left would use a three x minus two. And here, x is equal to one, so we have in three minus two. So that will also give me one. So the limit actually exists because they're equal. So this is not true. F of one is undefined. That's not correct because you have equal one. So it means I can work it out. So this is not true. It states F of X is discontinuous and one seen continuous. So one of them is true. Now, F of one, you replace X to be one. You have three times one minus two. So that is going to be one. So f of one is one. The limit exists and it gives us one. So because the limit exists and we get one along with f of one is one, our answer is D. Given f of x, we have two x minus one and ax plus seven, where this is a piecewise function. 
So for x greater than 2, we have 2x minus 1. And for x less than or equal to 2, we have ax plus 7. Find the value of a if the function is continuous at x equal 2. So that means that the limit as x tends to 2 coming from the left is the same as the limit as x tends to 2 coming from the right. So coming from the left, we are going to use the second one. Why is that so? Because this is saying x less than 2. So x less than 2 is on the left-hand side. So that's why I'm able to say I'm going to use ax plus 7. Replace x to be 2. So I have 2a plus 7, which is the same thing as saying a times 2. And coming from the right, we use the 2x minus 1. So I have 2 times 2 minus 1. 2 2 is 4 minus 1. That's 3. Carry over the 7. So I'll have minus 7. And this is 2a. So 2a minus 4. And divide both sides by 2. So a is equal to negative 2. So the answer is b. Given that f of x equal 2x squared minus 7x plus 6, then f prime x is equal to which of the following? We're just going to differentiate. 2, 2 is 4, and you subtract 1 from the power, so that's why we have 4x. When you differentiate minus 7x, the x disappears, so we have minus 7, and differentiate 6, that becomes 0. So the answer is d. Now, question 10. The gradient of the curve at x equal negative 2, we have to differentiate this. So carry the 2 in front, subtract 1 from the power, so we get 2x. Minus 5x, the x disappears, so I have minus 5, and 3 becomes 0. Replace x to be minus 2, so I have 2 times minus 2 minus 5. So 2 times minus 2, that's negative 4 minus 5, that gives you negative 9. So this will be your answer. Find the first derivative of the following. I have 5x squared plus 3x plus 2. So we multiply 5 times 2, that's 10. So I'll have 10x. You take away 1 from the power, so it becomes x to the 1. And 3x, when you differentiate 3x, it becomes 3. So I'll have plus 3. And differentiating 2, that's 0. So that means my answer is 10x plus 3. 1 over root x, the first thing, rewrite the square root as a half. Then we carry the x to the half upwards, so it becomes x to the negative a half. Then we differentiate, carry the negative a half in front. Then we subtract 1 from the power, so minus a half minus 1 is the same thing as negative a half x to the minus 3 over 2. So minus a half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2. Now there's no variable here, so the derivative of this is 0. While here differentiating using chain rule, we differentiate the inside, so differentiate 2x minus 7, that becomes 2. Then differentiate the outside, carry the 3 in front. Rewrite the 2x minus 7. And subtract 1 from the power, so 3 take away 1 is 2. So therefore, 2, 3, 6. And then we have 2x minus 7 raised to the 2. Next, we have minus 7x minus 5 raised to the 4th. So we differentiate the inside, so minus 7x become minus 7, this is 0, times carry the 4 in front. Then we have minus 7x minus 5, and take away 1 from the power, so that gives me 3. So minus 7 times 4, that's minus 28. 
Then we have minus 7x minus 5 raised to the 3. Now, if you have an exponential, you differentiate the exponential to the 5x. You differentiate that to get 5. Then you rewrite e to the 5x. That's all. To differentiate this, to differentiate 5x, you get 5. Then you multiply by 3. So that becomes 15e to the 5x. You differentiate 2x to get 2, so 2 times minus 2, that's negative 4e to the 2x. And that's it. Find the average rate of change for this from x equal 1 to 3. So first we have to find f of 1, which is replacing x to be 1. So I have 2 minus 3, 1 square. So that's 2 minus 3 to give me negative 1. And then I need to find f of 3. So that's 2 minus 3, 3 square. So it's 2 minus 3 square is 9. 9, 3 is 27. And 2 minus 27, that's negative 25. So the average rate of change is equal to minus 25 minus minus 1 over, we're going to have 3 take away 1. Now minus and minus turns to a plus. So we have minus 25 plus 1, that's negative 24. 3 take away 1, that's 2. So my answer is negative 12. That's the average rate of change. If we need to evaluate the limit as x tends to 3 for x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x minus 3, substituting x equal 3 in the numerator, I will have 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3 over 3 minus 3. 3 squared is 9 minus 2 times 3 is 6 minus 3, so that's going to give me 0 over zero, so I have to do more work, which is factorizing. So I need to factorize x squared minus two x minus three. So we need two numbers that multiply to give me negative three, but when I add, I will get minus two. Those numbers will be negative three and positive one. So I replace the center, so I have x squared minus three x plus one x or plus x, minus three. Grouping, in the first bracket, I can factor with x, so I'm left with x minus three. The next bracket, I factor with plus one, so I'm left with x minus three. So that means I have x plus one, and we have x minus three. So that means we have the limits as x tends to 3, in the numerator, I have x plus 1, and I have x minus 3 over x minus 3. This cancels, so I have the limit as x tends to 3, x plus 1. And then I replace x to be 3, so I have 3 plus 1, so my answer is 4. And that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.